Good morning and welcome to our worship from St Matthew's Church, Rich Hill. Today is Palm Sunday, the day when we recall Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, uh, coming as the King. Today in our worship we'll hear a part of Psalm 118 and our call to worship uh, comes from that psalm too. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. In Psalm 118, verse 25, we read, O Lord, save us. That phrase is the word Hosanna, a cry of praise as we call out to the Lord, to save us. We call out to the Lord now to save us as we confess our sins and call on him to have mercy on us. So let us pray. In my anguish I cried to the Lord and he answered by setting me free. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect of today, Palm Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first Bible reading today is from the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, and beginning to read at verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, Shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. This is is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say his love endures forever. 
Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Our second Bible reading is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 21, and beginning at the first verse. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coat the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. And he left there and went out of the city to Bethany where he spent the night. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, we ask your help now to see Jesus in all his glory and to welcome him as our Saviour. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My acting career uh, wasn't 
very successful. Uh, there are certainly no Oscars on the mantelpiece in the rectory, uh, and I don't expect to ever uh, win one either. Uh, I do know, however, the importance of getting your lines right. Uh, when I was in P6 in Tremor Central, uh, our school put on a performance of Snow White. Uh, I wonder if you can guess which of the characters I played in it. Well, I was one of the dwarves. Uh, drowsy, uh, as it turned out. Uh, and there I was with my rosy cheeks and my little hat, uh, doing the best sleep acting you have ever seen. Perhaps some of you are trying it right now as I preach to you. At the whole night, I had just two lines to say. One of them was, I'm tired. And the other was, is it time to go to sleep yet? Two lines, but I got them right. It was definitely better than my other appearance. At one year at our youth club, uh, we decided to put on a Christmas carol. And I was cast as Tiny Tim. I wonder if you can see a theme going on there in my casting roles. And the whole play led up to the moment when Scrooge had been redeemed. He was celebrating Christmas with the Cratchit family and Tiny Tim would sing a solo to end the performance. And in that moment, I forgot my words. I knew what hymn I had to sing. I thought I wouldn't need them, and I got them all wrong. It was terrible. I needed to get my lines right and to follow the script, just as I had done with my two lines the whole time of Snow White. As the events of Palm Sunday unfold, it's clear that everyone is playing their part. And everything is following the script that was written beforehand. So whether it's the donkeys or the palm branches, the turning of the tables or the children's praises, none of it happens by accident. Every part of it was written in advance. The script was there in the scriptures. So let's have a look together at the events of that first Palm Sunday and see what they tell us about the Lord Jesus. In verses 1 to 3, we're given the details of how two of the disciples go to get the donkey and the colt. Jesus and his disciples are drawing near to Jerusalem. They're almost there, and so the two disciples are sent ahead to get the donkeys. Well, why was it? that Jesus needed them. It wasn't just that he was feeling a bit drowsy, that he was tired, that this was like him hiring a taxi or getting on a bus to go into the city. No, the Lord needs them because they are included in the script. In verse 4, we read this. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The script in the scripture is from the opening verse of our Old Testament reading from Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. This pointed forward to the time when the humble king of Zion, uh, that's Jerusalem, uh, would come riding on a donkey. And now Jesus is fulfilling the scripture. He is filling it full of meaning by acting it out. He is saying that the promised king is here. So Jesus rides into town on the donkeys and straight away the crowd recognise who he is. 
A while back, whenever we could still go out for a meal, at one evening we had gone out for tea. And as we arrived at the front entrance of the hotel, we found that the red carpet was rolled out. Now, it wasn't there for us. We're not that special. Uh, It was there because they were having a wedding fair that evening and they were showing the bride and groom uh, the warm welcome that they would receive, the special welcome, the red carpet uh, welcome uh, for a special couple. And here the crowd, they spread their cloaks on the road, they they cut palm branches and spread them on the road uh, to smooth the way, uh, to show just how special Jesus is. They recognise that Jesus is important, that he is the king. And they join in with their lines, uh, words that were written down in advance. Words from Psalm 118. In verse 9, we see, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And a bit about Hosanna to the son of David, uh, that's from Psalm 118 as well. Hosanna means save, Lord, a cry of praise and prayer. The crowd recognise that Jesus is the coming king. And so they shout out the script from the scriptures to welcome their king. So Jesus makes it into the city. Then he goes to the temple. But he isn't there as a tourist, you know, to take a few photos and maybe buy a couple of postcards. Just have a wee look around. Jesus is there to create a fuss, to disrupt what was going on. I wonder, can you picture this scene as we read it together? Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. Can you imagine at the noise of the coins ringing on the ground, the scramble of people running to try to gather them all up, the hustle and bustle, the confusion of what's going on. Now, why did Jesus do this? You see, it's not really something we expect Jesus to do. Well, I'm here in St. Matthew's Church in Rich Hill. This building once served as the market house until the market closed and the building was converted to be the parish church for the village. A place of trade became a place of prayer. Well, the temple authorities had managed to take it the other way round. Jesus says in verse 13, it is written, my house will be a house of prayer for the nations. But you are making it a den of robbers. The temple authorities had made it into a den of robbers. Because you had to change your ordinary money into temple money at a poor exchange rate and then you had to buy uh, the proper animals for sacrifice at a greatly inflated price. And so Jesus follows the script as he quotes from Isaiah chapter 56 to make the temple once again a place of prayer. The scriptures become the script for Jesus. The coming, king, the coming king, sorry, cleanses the temple. Now with space in the place, the blind and the lame come to Jesus and he heals them. God is in his temple and wonderful things are happening. The king has come, cleansed the temple and is putting wrong things right. So I wonder, how would you finish this sentence? When the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple, they... What? What did they do? 
They joined in the praising? No. They welcomed him with open arms? No. They were really happy? No. They were indignant. Everyone else is happy at praising God, shouting out loud, and they have poker faces. They say to Jesus in verse 16, do you not hear, uh, sorry, do you hear what these children are saying? The children have been crying out the same words as the crowd earlier on. Hosanna to the son of David. And the priests and the teachers of the law don't like it. And Jesus says that the children too are following the same script. He says, yes, have you never read from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise? I imagine that Jesus says this with a smile on his face. You see, he, he, he says to the top religious people in the land, he says, have you never read? And then quotes a bit from the Bible. They know it, but they don't recognise what's happening in front of them. The children are just fulfilling their lines from the script of Scripture, from Psalm 8 and verse 2. Written down at long before was this promise that children would praise the Lord, the Lord Jesus. And now they're doing it, singing praise to the promised coming king. In this one scene, we have four Old Testament scriptures at being fulfilled as the script is followed. And as we continue to read about Jesus, we discover that everything that happened in his life, in his death, in his resurrection and glorification, uh, it was all promised in advance in the scriptures. The question is this, what will your response be? You see, Palm Sunday isn't just a drama that we watch on stage. As Shakespeare uh, once wrote all the world's a stage. We have our part to play. We get to share in the drama. And in some ways your, uh, your options are the same as my two stage performances. Your lines have already been written. Will you uh, forget your lines? Or deliberately move away from the script and be indignant with the king, refusing to praise him, refusing to welcome him? Or will you join in the chorus line, the repeated joyful response of the crowd and the children, Hosanna to the son of David. It's a cry of rejoicing. Because it's a cry asking him to save us. The king has come. Humble. In the name of the Lord. To cleanse and heal. And to accept our praise. Because he is our saviour. On the way to the cross. Will you join in that cry today? Will you make him your king? As you say, Hosanna to the Son of David. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for sending Jesus into the world to be our Saviour and our King. Give us your grace to welcome him with loud Hosannas as we rejoice in his salvation. For we ask it in his name. Amen.
we declare our faith now in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, using an ancient creed of the church. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer. We thank you that you hear our prayers and will answer them for your glory and for our good. We ask that you would unite our hearts to ask according to your will. Stir us, Lord, to pray and to seek your face in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we continue to pray against the spread of the coronavirus. Give your strength to all who give of themselves to serve the community, all who work in the health service and other key workers. As they put themselves at risk, so we pray for your protection. Give wisdom and skill to those who are researching the virus and seeking a vaccine. Lord, we look to you for your help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for your church, scattered at present, but redeployed for service in the community. Lord, as we experience this discomfort, we ask that you'd keep us mindful of our persecuted brothers and sisters who cannot meet together at any time those who are persecuted because they belong to you. We pray that you would bless them, that you would keep them strong in faith and courage, that they and we would not deny you as our Lord. Help us, Lord, to use this time wisely and to look for ways to share your love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for all who are in positions of authority here and around the world. Give them the wisdom they need to make wise decisions, to do what is best for everybody. Help them to think and speak and act with clarity and purpose. And lead them to follow the example of the Lord Jesus, our humble servant King. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for our partners in Paraguay at this time, and especially for the church in Concepcion. Lord, as the Paraguay team were due to travel next week, So we pray that you would clear the way for them to make it to Paraguay in your perfect timing. Keep us focused on you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all who are ill today, especially those known to us, as we ask for your healing and your help. We pray for your comfort for all who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray for your presence to be known by all who are isolated or alone. 
And we pray for your peace to be with all who are fearful at this time. Lord, you know the needs of each and every person. We ask you to bless each one now and in the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we conclude our prayers in the words of the Lord's Prayer as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for joining with us today. Uh, all our news and updates and prayer diary as well can be found on our St Matthew's Rich Hill Facebook page. This week uh, we will have a series of special services for Holy Week and we'll be looking at the words spoken by the Lord Jesus on the cross. And these will be also available on our Facebook and YouTube channels throughout the week. And also if we can help in any way, then please don't hesitate to get in contact. We'd be glad to be able to help. So let's pray as we receive God's blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>